Should you get 200 watts or should you get 200 watts? Wait, that's the same, right? No, it's not the same. It's actually a little bit different depending on how you wire your panels and also what your project might be. So is it better to get two 100 watt panels or maybe two 200 watt panels and wire them in series or parallel? Or is it better just to get really one big panel and kind of call it a day depending on what your build is? So I'll show you what happens on the differences when you wire these up in series and then also when you wire them up in parallel and also show you how well this SIGS panel performs because this is one of the best performing panels I've ever seen, especially on shade testing. So we'll get started. We'll go over a little bit about the panels and then we'll see how it works. Bouge RV just released this brand new flexible arc panel, which now has half cut cells and also utilizing 10 bus bars running through each one of the cells to provide better output numbers and less hot spotting between the cells. This new solar panel also has an ETFE coating. This coating helps promote a much longer service life and also helps with self cleaning and also can withstand harsh weather conditions and against delamination under long term service use. And with two layers of fiberglass, this makes it much more durable against like hail damage and it gives it a lot more flexibility to give you a lot more mounting options when mounting it on curved surfaces. This panel also comes in at under 4 pounds and 2 millimeters thick. The SIG solar panel is made up of a copper indium gallium selenide. With this being ultra thin, it has a high absorption rate. And with it being able to be applied to flexible backings, this means that it can also be mounted on a lot of different materials and giving you lots of mounting options. It's also ultra thin at only one millimeters thick and because of its 48 bypass diodes, this means its shade performance is exceptionally well, better than just about any other solar panel. Okay, we're going to be testing these two panels first and then I'll show you what happens when we utilize that other panel. I'll put these in series and then I'll put them in parallel. Now our conditions today aren't exactly great, but that's not what we're really going for. It's more in how they perform under these conditions and what it looks like when you have two versus one big panel. Okay, both of these solar panels are wired in series. This is kind of our baseline number and that's just taking positive and negative and connecting them together into the extension. And we'll see what happens when we add some shade to this in a minute, like that chair. That's going to be our guy that's going to provide shade to our panels and then we'll see what happens as we go. Okay, one more baseline before we add the shade. And now we're going to shade half of one panel and show you what happens. So now because they're wired in series, one panel actually takes out the other panel. But if we wire them in parallel, taking both positives together and both negatives together, now I haven't moved the chair, but now this allows them to act independently of each other. So now one panel is getting at least 80 watts while the other one is pretty much at zero. And so now I remove the chair and both of these are still in parallel, but series will typically give you better overall results but the shade performance is typically very poor. So depending on your setup, you'll have to determine is shade gonna be a problem. And if it is, well, then you may wanna wire them in parallel, but even with them wired in parallel as such as shown here, it still takes them both out. Now, this is just one of the solar panels connected normally, so you can see what one is producing at the moment. But the conditions, again, are not very good as we do have a lot of high clouds in the sky. But under my initial review of these Bouge RV panels, they actually tested really well. So I tried to get these pretty much at the best solar alignment that I could, at least right now. They're not perfect, but they are providing pretty much max, at least under these conditions. Okay, so now for this SIG solar panel, which this did take a little bit to set up because it is so flexible. It's really supposed to be mounted on something, but I'll show you what it looks like when we get some shade on this, but we'll get some baseline numbers first. Now, overall, this panel has always produced really good numbers with my initial testing. Now, I don't have any long-term tests yet, but it usually performs better than two solar panels, even under these cloudy skies. I always get a better output under clear conditions or even under cloudy skies like this. Now, we're just going to shade a little sliver just to kind of show you what happens. We do get a little bit of a drop. It's not terrible, though, versus a single panel. This would actually be a big hit. Now this is going to provide a lot more shade on the section and this will actually drop down quite a bit. A normal single panel would pretty much be at zero. Now if we were to do this to two panels, we would also be at zero versus this is still providing 23 watts. 
Now as we change our shade down here and just get a little bit less than about a quarter of the panel, this still provides a decent amount of power out at 127. And again, a single panel would be at zero under this configuration. So now when you add a little bit of a split shading, if this was a single panel or maybe 200 watt panels, this would actually be a zero output configuration. But even under these conditions, we're still getting a respectable 68 watts. So now I've added a whole bunch more shade and this under any circumstance on another setup would be zero output. But because this solar panel has so many bypass diodes in it, it still allows it to produce power. Even though it's only 16 watts, some watts are better than no watts as we say. Well, now that you've seen how these panels perform, I mean, you don't have to do this with flexible panels. You can do this with really any rigid panel, but I've never seen any rigid panels perform as well as this SIG does, at least during shade testing. And this is the stick-on model, so it does make it easy to install, but you know, you're always gonna get better performance out of a rigid panel over the long term, but depending if you need something light, something thin, that's what really these come into play, because that way you just have more options for your build. And there are discounts down below in the links, and if you guys have any questions, there's a link down there called Ask Me. I hope you liked the video, and I hope to see you next time.